Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Charles back here again for another show. Hope you're doing well. Silly season has begun. A lot of transfer rumours and speculation. Going to go through some of the recent reports regarding Chelsea's potential business this summer in today's show. If you are new around here, want the latest Chelsea content, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of the content. If you are enjoying it, please do give the video a like. Really does help out. And if you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. So let's get into Manuel. Well, you got a first. Uh, the sporting Lisbon midfielder has been linked. We spoke about him at the back end of last week and, and why he potentially could be a good fit. Now, reports coming out of Portugal recently in the past couple of days state that there is a 2.6 million gap between Chelsea's offering salary to Ugarte and PSG. PSG apparently are offering 5 million euros while Chelsea are putting forward only two. Apparently, Mauricio Pochettino really wants the player and has called to convince him. I slightly want to talk about maybe some criticisms because we did look at a lot of positives last week via that Breaking the Line scout report. So please go and check out that show if you haven't already. Expected Chelsea, an account that I'm sure many of you follow. You should if you haven't already. He goes into maybe some questions and concerns about you got in and maybe why he isn't a perfect fit for Chelsea, particularly with what uh, Sporting Lisbon are demanding in terms of a fee with, with PSG in the race as well. He said he finds Ugarte's uh, statistical profile to be extremely interesting, elite ball winning, tidy in possession, but nothing else stands out yet. He also refers and, and he sort of compares him to Wilfred Ndidi or, or Drissa Guy at Villa. Um, he says, I have some questions about Manuel Ugarte coming, from, coming from a position of good faith. Is his speed of thought on the ball fast? He's an excellent tackler, but do teams pass around him easily? Does he change directions quickly enough? He goes on to say, I have been watching a few of his games and these are my main concerns. Technically, he's good, but he doesn't think fast enough, so makes safe passes. He's caught two square while defending passes. Opponents can bypass him. And he ends by saying he's a bit flat-footed. These are all, I think, valid concerns, particularly for such a key position and particularly for one that has been so problematic for Chelsea uh, and not been resolved. What you don't want is another you know, Tim Way, Bakayoko situation or a Jorginho situation in the sense that you're buying someone who maybe is overwhelmed by the physicality of the Premier League and also is going to be coming into a system, you'd hope Pochettino would identify this and, and understand this with, with going for a, and wanting a player like Ugarte is that someone who is physical, you know, because he wants players that can deal with that intensity on a regular basis. Now, that transition of intensity is something that is kind of at times hard to know from one league to the next. That is a, a big problem and why, you know, it didn't surprise me that some reports came out when we, we were linked with Pochettino that they'd be looking for Premier League proven quality. That hasn't quite worked out all the time. That isn't always a set guarantee of success. Um, in terms of transfers, we have seen some of Chelsea's best recent transfers come from outside the Premier League. I mean, look at Benoit Badiashile this season. But we have seen Wesley Fofana perform well. We have seen Ben Chilwell perform well, two players from Leicester. Um, you know, there are obviously examples that can make either point. I think more just in the case of what I'm looking for from a defensive midfielder is you want someone who is going to be able to cover for others, someone who is going to be able to eat up a lot of ground is going to be a good tackler and, and hopefully give Chelsea a license to be a little bit more risky, maybe in possession. I don't think that Pochettino has ever been someone that is as precise with possession. I think he wants his team and says as much he wants his team to retain the ball, but not to a a relentless kind of uh, passing you to death kind of way. He, I think he wants that intensity. He wants a bit of directness in his play. And that was best encapsulated by his Spurs team. Of course, he is working with a different group of players here at Chelsea. So trying to replicate everything he did at Spurs is, is going to be impossible, as we know. But I do think in the case of Ugarte, and particularly with that kind of more defensive-minded player, one of the things that he loved to do to give balance and to give uh, kind of the license for players to move forward and to attack a little bit more was to have one of the defensive midfielders in a 4-2-3-1 kind of drop back into uh, central defence and you, you split the other centre-backs, you basically make a back three in and out of possession and that allowed Spurs, basically allowed Carl Walker and Danny Rose to become wing-backs uh, a lot of the time and, and get them up and down those flanks on a more regular basis. And you understand when, when you look at Ben Chirwell, when you look at Rhys James, Malo Gusto coming in, if we potentially keep Ian Matson or Mark Cacare, if I can say his name, there is, you know, there is obviously benefit to that and also other players that can then kind of assist the attack a lot more. So that kind of fluidity is, is obvious and, and Chelsea don't really have someone like that at the moment. You can see Enzo Fernandes do that, but he's not that type of player. And I think about Enzo Fernandes, who, of course, is such a big uh, investment from Chelsea. He has played a majority of the time as kind of that deeper midfielder. 
and he is much more akin to a Cesc Fabregas than he is an Emmanuel Matic, just to kind of simplistically kind of refer to previous Chelsea midfielders. So I think you want someone next to him or behind him that is going to give him the license to move forward, to play those um, line cutting passes, to be creative and, and get on the ball, because that is the type of player he is. Um, it's not that he can't do anything in defence, but we know his best strengths lie further up the pitch, probably, and you want him that, that license to be able to do that a little bit more. So Ugarte or a player of his ilk could potentially offer that from a defensive point of view. I did think, you know, when you look at some of it, some of the numbers that we delved into from the Portuguese league last week and also kind of the way he covers ground a lot of the time, there was a very flattering comparison to an N'Golo Kante, which is unfair for any player. It really is. So I don't expect N'Golo Kante regen to appear in Emmanuel Ugarte. I think that's going to be very, very difficult for any player in world football to try and replicate. He is a very unique player, Kante. But just in the sense of a profile that if we lose Kante, either lose him you know, and he leaves this summer or we keep him and you know that he can't play every game and he, we lose him for injury you aren't then stuck with no kind of defensive profiles, which at times Chelsea have, particularly this season, really struggled with. So to have that balance again is is key. So I think other names like Moises Casado make a lot of sense. I think Casado is a very, very good midfielder. Brighton can sell. They maybe would sell that player. I don't think McAllister for his benefit offers that. I, I, I've always been a little bit baffled by that link because, you know, we've signed Enzo Fernandez. Like, you know, the profile of player for me that Chelsea need is a defensive-minded midfielder, someone who has a bit of you know mobility about them, a physicality too. You need someone who is aggressive in that area, who can deal with the physicality of the Premier League. That I don't think that's a, a, a regressive way of looking at English football. I just think it's a reality. For all, Jorginho did good in the Premier League. There are times, and you've seen it since he moved to Arsenal, he can be overwhelmed. And that is something that I think he expects Chelsea brings up in terms of being played around quite quickly. You want someone who can be big, but also is quick enough to deal with that that intensity that will come at you from the Premier League, uh, particularly if you're having to cover more ground for other players. So I think that's a, an interesting argument. And we'll see what happens with Chelsea and kind of the salary, because it you know wage structure is kind of, a big thing but apparently for this ownership you know they have brought down the wages even though they have spent a lot of money in terms of transfer fees so we'll see how that story develops Callum hudson apparently will hold talks with Pochettino before deciding his Chelsea future Forrest and Crystal Palace are, are interested apparently via some reports Callum hudson it hasn't worked out for him at Bayer Leverkusen I felt it started really well and I felt the decision to go on loan made so much sense for his own personal development he has got a lot of minutes I think the most worrying thing he has had some injury problems which is also something he's had consistently in his career but also Javi Alonso once it has started to click with Bayer Leverkusen uh, once players like Florian Verts came back from injury and uh, got back in the team and they got to a Europa League semi-final hudson Doy didn't have the influence or, or involvement that maybe he would have wanted to and of course some of that of course is down to fitness but it hasn't been the roaring success that he would have wanted it to be and I think some of us maybe hoped it would be for him personally as a player who you know struggled a lot in recent years to kind of find his best position find those minutes when maybe he could have had more at Chelsea Chelsea have to make a swift decision on Callum hudson Doy because he's got now I think into the final two years you either sell him or you try and keep him I don't see the point of sending him out on loan again because I think it's worth selling him permanently this summer if you can find a a willing buyer. And I do think maybe that there could be one in the Bundesliga. I think that would be a very good league for him. I just don't see with Madawake, Mudrik. We'll see what maybe Pochettino thinks of Hudson-Odoi, but I... I'd be a little bit stunned if he returns to Chelsea and has a, a significant role. It's not that there is no way back. You know, look at Ruben off the sheet, the way he's returned to Chelsea. And although he's still been kind of a, a sporadic presence, it's not that you can't come back and have an influence. And if uh, Mauricio Pochino is going to be using wide players a lot more frequently at Chelsea rather than inside forwards, that probably suits Callum hudson Doy. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I do think for his own personal career, it probably is the best time to move on a little bit like Loftus-Cheek and, and seek football elsewhere. Chelsea, as you probably won't be surprised to find out, are not triggering the option in Dennis Zakaria's loan to buy him on a permanent basis and he will turn to Juve. Not that much of a surprise. I mean, there was that short period after the World Cup when he was playing for, for Graham Potter and had some good performances and looked like actually could offer something that Chelsea hadn't had. And then, of course, he got injured and that really derailed any progress there and it just hasn't worked for him at all. He's been on the fringes for so long now. It's been just waiting for the end of the season. So not that much of a surprise and he made absolutely no dent at Stamford Bridge, really, if you think about it, which is a shame. 
Final thing to speak about today, it regards goalkeepers. So we speak about David Raya first. This tweet from Ben Jacobs reports that Thomas Frank has again reiterated that Raya can leave for around 40 million, apparently Chelsea and Spurs both considering him. And I also want to bring up this other article earlier this month written by uh, Matt Law that says Chelsea eyeing 40 million deal for Inter Milan's Andre Onana. Chelsea apparently are expected to sell Edouard Mendy this season or this summer, sorry. And while Chelsea may have to pay into around 40 million to sign Onana, the 27 year old salary is likely to fit within the club's wage structure. We was, you know, you refer to wage structure being important here when we look back to Manuel Ugarte and why that deal may not happen from a Chelsea point of view with PSG offering a bit more. I like Andre Onana as a goalkeeper. I think, you, you know, looking for good goalkeepers, I think Milan is a pretty good place. When you look at AC Milan with Mike Magnon, he's been, I think, a very good signing for them. And Andre Onana has had some really, really good performances. He's in the Champions League final with them and has made some big saves on their journey to that final. Um, and 40 million for Raya, 40 million for Andre Onana. I mean, if I put that to you now, which one would you like more? Raya, I think he's done some very good work at, at Brentford, who I think have been a very shrewd club. And uh, Raya is, is, is joining that journey for a long period now and has at times provided some key saves, some key moments. It's such a shame for me that once again, Chelsea are having to look for a new goalkeeper when we thought that we'd kind of solved this problem with Edward Mendy, but it's gone so wrong with his form. And also just, I think, in terms of the contract situation has meant that, you know, he's maybe been pushed closer to the exit door and that's just going to happen now. So in terms of reviving the career of Edward Mendy seems like a lost cause at this point. So Chelsea have to be proactive and I don't want to go into another season with Kepa Rizablaga as number one. You know, I see again, he's up for, what is it, one of the saves of the season. I mean, he has had a better season. It hasn't been as tragic as he, as one of his first seasons at Chelsea, but he still is a, a liability. And I hate to say that about any Chelsea player, but that's just the reality. I mean, I still think there are just fundamental flaws in Kepa Ariza Blaga's game that are going to limit him. And they're going to limit Chelsea, and I don't want that anymore. I want players that are going to expand our options, not limit them. Another thing to, to bring up here is regards Man City opening talks apparently for Matteo Kovacic. Apparently positive discussions took place with players camp in the last few days of personal terms. Chelsea opened to selling Kovacic as part of midfield revolution. It's, you know, not a surprise. And I think it makes sense. I think it makes a ton of sense to sell Matteo Kovacic this summer. I don't see much benefit in keeping him much longer. I think we've got all we can out of Matteo Kovacic. Um, and I we spoke about this maybe a few weeks ago. Actually, I spoke about it in the players I would sell when Kovacic was one of them. So go back to watch that video for my reasons for selling Matteo Kovacic. But hopefully Chelsea can get good good money for Kovacic. I do think that's kind of the, the nice thing here. I think it is a... Uh, move a little bit like the Jorginho one earlier in the season that suits both parties I think it's time to move on from Matteo Kovacic but I also think Chelsea from a financial point of view can recoup most of the fee hopefully that they paid to Real Madrid in what was it now 2019 which I think is a good thing for a player at his age it really is in a position Chelsea are so actually some of the biggest money or the highest fee Chelsea could get from the players they're about to sell might be from Matteo Kovacic, who I think would suit probably Pep Guardiola. I'm not quite sure what it means for someone like Calvin Phillips and what it means for the future of their midfield, but I think it makes sense and hopefully the deal gets done quickly. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below and I'll see you again very soon. All the best. Mm -hmm. 